Okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, let us pray and praise Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala because of His blessing and mercy. We can be here together without any obstacle and with healthy condition. In the third behalf, International Social Innovation Conference 2020 virtual version. Second, is greeting and salawat to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who had brought us to the path of light. Ladies and gentlemen, before we start our event today, we would like to express our sincere gratitude. The Honorable Director of University of Bengkulu, Professor Ridwan Nurazi. The Honorable the Vice Rector of University of Bengkulu, Professor Lizar Alfansi. The Honorable, the Dean Faculty, Economy and Business, University of Bengkulu, Dr. Retno Agustina Ekaputri. The Honorable, a speaker from an Rector of Prince of Songkha, Thailand, Ms. Nursaida Usain. The Honorable, a speaker of Sambeda University, Philippines, Professor Alessios Maranan. The Honorable, Dr. Wan Muhammad Nazar, as a project director, BSIC from University Malaysia, Kelantan. The Honorable, Vice President for Linkage and International Affairs, Sambeda University, Professor Tita Benzuela. The Honorable Head of Committee Virtual the Third Beehive International Social Innovation Conference 2020 from University of Bengkulu, Ms. Seprianti Ekaputri. The Honorable Faculty Member Researches College from University of Bengkulu, University Malaysia, Kelantan, President San Beda University. Prince of Songkhla, Thailand, and all presenters and participants. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been a great honor for me, Dinda Rahmadani Putri, to be here and welcome it and every one of you in the conference. Ladies and gentlemen, to open our conference today, let's hear together the national anthem, Indonesia Raya. Attendees are welcome to stand up. Come it and every one of you in the conference. <laughs>
Ladies and gentlemen, before we proceed the program today, the agenda for our conference today is as follows. First, opening. Second, readings of the rules and regulation. Third, reciting prayer. Fourth, photo session. Fifth, introducing the keynote speech. Sixth, discussion session. Seventh, closing statement. And eighth, closing ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third Beehive International Social Innovation Conference 2020 virtual version. Ladies and gentlemen, to welcome our dear participant, Professor Lizar Alfansi will deliver the welcome speech. To Professor Lizar Alfansi, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi. Can you hear all my voice? Bisa ya? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the third Beehive uh, International Social Innovation Conference 2020 at the University of Bengkulu, virtually. Uh, it is an honor to be with you all this distinguished speaker for today's meeting. I would like to thank the leader of the, the Hive uh, Network Association who have allowed the University of Bengkulu to host this virtual uh, meeting. I would also like to thank uh, Professor Dato, uh, Dr. Noor Azizi bin Ismail, Vice Chancellor of the University of Malaysia, Kelantan, Professor Nik Maharam Binti Nik Muhammad, Director of Global Entrepreneurship Research and Innovation, and Dr. Nazrul, Project Director of uh, BISEC from uh, Malaysia, Kelantan. And also I would like to thank our keynote speaker for today's meeting, Ms. Nur Saida Huseng of uh, Prince of Songla, Thailand, and Professor Alicius Ma, uh, Maharanam, President of Sanda Beda University, the Philippines. I would also like to welcome our honorable presenter who will present their research to uh, this uh, wonderful uh, virtual conference. And I was, would also like to thank uh, Dr. Retno Eka Putri, the Dean of the Faculty of Economics. And last but not least, many thanks to Ms. Eka Suprianti, Eka Suprianti, the Project Director of uh, BISEC UNIB, who has worked very hard to conduct this virtual conference. Ladies and gentlemen, before we talk about social innovation and social entrepreneurship, I would like to brief you all about our university. Uh, facts about the University of Bengkulu. It is a state university established in 1982 with a student body of uh, 22,000 and 825 lectures in 78 uh, program study. Uh, located in the, in the gorgeous coastal city, Bengkulu, Southwest Sumatra, Indonesia, you can see the stunning view of the Indian Ocean from the university main campus. I hope you can uh, visit our university one day uh, in person. And also it's the, 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 it is the uh, home of the biggest flower in the world, the Corps of Lily, Rafael Charnoldi, and home of the tallest flower in the world, Kibut flower. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, we have uh, COVID-19 right now, and the impact of uh, COVID-19 is devastating. The university, oh, sorry, the, the UN University estimate that the economic fallout could push an estimate half a billion people into poverty and take global development progress back three decades, primarily in emerging economies. And also the International Labor Organization warned that steep decline in the ability to work and operate due to the pandemic is threatening the livelihood of 1.6 billion workers in, in the informal economy, almost half of the global workforce. In our country, uh, the Indonesian economic growth is estimated to be minus 1.7 to uh, 0 0.6 in 2020. So it's a big impact to our economy. 
And also the pandemic would increase Indonesian poverty number by three to uh, five million people. Unemployment in Indonesia would increase by four to five million in 2020. Therefore, the role of social innovator and social entrepreneur are becoming more important. Given the magnitude of the COVID-19 crisis, it is important to think in entrepreneur, entrepreneurial ways in order to derive uh, or, or to provide novel solution. And social innovator and social entrepreneur have been working to solve market failure and demonstrate more sustainable model to build inclusive economics for years. And also, the work of social entrepreneur is even more critical during the COVID-19 pandemic as they reach those who the market and the government are unable to account for. And it is also important to note that the trend social innovation and social entrepreneurship research in the last uh, decade. Yeah? In the past five years, we have seen a surge in attention with particular focus on the role of entrepreneur, network, system, institution, and cross-sectoral uh, cross partnership. And as a young field of scientific inquiry, social entrepreneurship and social innovation offer numerous possibilities for future areas of research. We call entrepreneurship motivated by environmental and social objective, the involvement of young people and women and the role of technology such as crowdsourcing or social objective as important topic of our future research. There has been an increased emphasis on social policy focusing on finding entrepreneurial ways to handle the COVID-19 crisis that incorporate some degrees of failure cooperation. Ladies and gentlemen, we hope we can have some uh, wonderful insight from our uh, conference and best wishes for the webinar and have a productive meeting. Thank you very much. Hope one day you all can visit uh, our university and stay safe and have a productive uh, conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay, thank you, Professor Rizal Alfansi. Next agenda is reading of rules and regulation. Please, your attention. Okay. First, of rules and regulation. Enter the webinar via Zoom meeting link and kindly click on the X to join or join now button. Second, while entering the Zoom meet link on that, please keep your presentation and video off and audio in mute mode for smooth conducting of the meeting. Third, participants are requesting to join the virtual BC 2020 in 10 minutes before we commence my time. Four participants are requesting to join live streaming on YouTube link. If you are unable to join through to Zoom meet because as joining through Zoom meet will be restricted to maximum of participants. Fifth, and decision of virtual visit 2020 feedback form will be given in the Zoom meet and YouTube chat box. Submission of feedback form in compulsory for getting a certificate. Participants join through YouTube link have ensured their present by giving attendance in YouTube chat box. Six, a feedback form will be served during the session to be filled by present participant. Seven, participant will be eligible to get the certificate only after filling that form for a plenary session. Please take a note. Feedback form will be only be available during the session. It will be provided in the chat box. If you leave a session with fit, without feedback, the certificate won't issue. Eight, 
For participants must attend daily keynote speeds for two days and its certificate will be generated within one week. Four presenter will get the e certificate after the session of plenary session. Nine, Q&A will be divided two types, raised hand and Google formling. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, next is reciting prayer. To Mr. Orize Hafiz Wahyudi, time is yours. Unmute yourself, please. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ladies and gentlemen, let us bow our head for a moment. Pray to God Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that our international conference can be precious to all of us. I will lead this prayer based on the teaching of Islam and those who are not Muslim. You are pleased to pray according to each of your belief. <coughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Hamdan yu'afi ni'ama huwa yukafi wa ma'zidah. Ya Rabbana lakal hamdu kama yan bagi li jalali wajihkal karimi wa azimi sultanik. Allahumma inna nas'aluka salamatan fi din, wa anfiyatan fil jasadi, wa ziyadatan fil ilmi, wa barakatan fi rizki, wa taubatan qabla al-maut, wa rahmatan inna al-maut, wa maghfiratan ba'da al-maut. Allahumma fir lana, wa li walidayna, wa li al-muslimin, wa al-muslimat, والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك على كل شيء قريب يا قدي الحاجة أو الله today Sunday October 5 2020 in this virtual conference we gather here to bring about an international conference on economic education business and accounting the third behind international social innovation conference we seek 2020, make this international conference as a useful science assembly, as a medium of sharing useful idea, knowledge, and experience of scholars, resources, and students of various disciplines. May the conference we organize today benefit to our life, broaden our knowledge, sign our idea, and lead us to be successful, productive person, which in turn will boast dignity of our nation. O Allah, God and bless our heart and our mind with the light of your guidance. Impart your supreme wisdom upon our activity. Help us to speak our mind clearly. Help us to listen to each other, respect each other, love each other so that we are included to the blessed person. O oh Allah, protect us from unintended temptation. Show us the right path and give us knowledge and strength to perform good things. Equally, show us and make it clear the bad things and give us knowledge and strength to avoid them. O oh Allah, you are the one who can fulfill our dua. Rabbana atina fid dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Subhanaka rabbil izzati amaya sifun wa salamun ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Amin, amin, amin. Ya Rabbal Alamin. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Thank you to Mr. Orizei Hafiz Wahyudi. Ladies and gentlemen, next schedule is photo session. To all participants, please turn on your video. Please be prepared. I'm going to start from slide one. Okay, slide one. One, two, three. Okay, wait a minute. And next, slide two. 
slide two. Okay, slide two. One, two, three. Okay. Next, slide three. Please turn on your video. Slide three, one, two, three. Okay. Slide four, please turn on your video. One, two, three. Okay, wait a minute. Slide fifth, please turn on your video. One, two, three. Okay. Slide six, one, two, three. Okay. Okay, slide seven. Please your turn on your video. One two, three. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, next agenda will be led by our moderator, let me introduce our moderator for today. Please welcome Dr. Wan Muhammad Nazir bin Wan Muhammad Nazir. He was worked at Faculty of Entrepreneurship and Business University in Malaysia, Kelantan since 2007. He graduated from Multimedia University with a Bachelor of International Business in 2006. Then he obtained his master degree at University of Sydney, Australia in 2008. Further, his PhD degree at Victoria University, Australia. Since then, Dr. Nazra has actively participated in social innovation activities at University of Malaysia, Kelantan, and around South is Asia, countries like Indonesia, Thailand, and Philippines. The platform of Beehive and Seed, which was established to support the virtue of social innovation and social entrepreneurship worldwide. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, introducing the keynote speech, discussion session, and closing statement will be lead with Dr. Wan Muhammad Nasr. To Dr. Wan Muhammad Nasr, you may take over from Master of Ceremony. To Dr. Wan Muhammad Nasr, you may take over from Master of Ceremony. Can you hear me? I think it should be all right, right now? Yeah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning to all of you. I thank you so much, Ms. Dinda Rahmadani. I believe you are a student at the Universitas Bengkulu. Uh, yes, yesterday thank I've you. met with a student as well and you are both performed very well. Actually, you are the bright future of uh, Indonesia. All right, thank well, you, for today we do have, uh, sorry, Prior to that, uh, I would like to say hello to uh, Prof. Lizar Alfansi. Hello, Dr. Nasir. of Academic Affairs. How are you, Prof? 
Uh, I'm okay. How are you? Good, good, good. I'm all right. I'm all right as well. Uh, yesterday we've met with uh, Prof Ridwan. Yes, I know. I yeah, was you, there too. You, you, you've been invited us to, I mean, to visit uh, uni. Yes, yes. I right. Uh, this year, actually, we should conduct this program at Universitas Bengkulu, but... Well, comes uh, next time. I mean, oh, when sure. the, the, comf the the pandemic is over, you may uh, come to our university, you know? All right, all right. Sure, we will. It's we a will. beautiful uh, white sandy facing Indian Ocean. <laughs> I bet you would like it. Yeah, yeah. I believe, I believe. Uh, I've been there once, uh, you know, for the meetings uh, prior, really? prior that, I mean... To conduct this one uh, last wow. December, yeah. Okay, okay. I just, 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 I, I just don't get the chance to meet with you, but maybe later on uh, the next visit, uh, then we'll meet with you. Okay, all right. All right, okay, all right. Then uh, for today's uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, including the prof uh, yourself, uh, we are going to have another two keynote speaker from two both prominent university, one um, with. Uh, Prince of Songkla University, Dr. Nur Sahida Usang. And then um, before Dr. Nur Sahida provide the uh, keynote speech, I would like to read uh, the uh, CV, the bio data of Dr. Nur Sahida. Okay, Dr. Nur Sahida, Dr. Nur Sahida actually, sorry. Um, it's from University of uh, University Prince of Songkla Batani Campus, and now uh, from the Department of Humanities and Social Science. Now, Dr. Nur Sahida is the Assistant to the President for Human Resources and Organization Development, Batani Campus. Also, she's a lecturer for Human Resource Management. Um, well, the CV for Dr. Nosaida is very uh, impressive, actually. I, I don't think I'm, I, I have to read all because uh, you'll get to know her, uh, uh, I mean, after this. But Dr. Nosaida uh, has been conducted uh, the first degree from a Malaysia actually, Petronas University of Technology, Perak, Bachelor of Technology, Honors, Information and Communication Technology, and majoring in software engineering. All right, Dr. Nosaida as well got the MBA from Multimedia University, Malaysia. Wow, you, you are actually graduated from Malaysia and as well as the PhD from Malaysia, University Science Malaysia. Okay, um, without further ado, I would like to welcome Dr. Nur Sahida uh, to present your keynote speech for today. Please, Doctor. Hi, thank you, Dr. Nasrul. Yeah, dear Honorable Professor Lisa Alfansi and another keynote speaker, uh, from San Beda University, Philippines, Mr. Aloysius Maranan. Yep. Uh, dear presenters, uh, committees, and all participants, um, thanks again to our moderator, um, Dr. Nazarol. Uh, you have read out my profile somehow, so I, I believe now the participants or audience uh, have inside uh, information about human resource management. So since uh, today is one of the topics that um, human resource management is one of the topics, so I would like to share um, some information about human resource management, but it's still related to the uh, social innovation. Yeah, so let me share the screen. <clears throat> oh, they are not, uh, committees do not allow me to share screen. One moment. Okay, so this is, oh, okay, so somebody helps to control the screen for me? Yeah, I think so. There must be someone at Universal. Okay, All right. yeah. okay now I can share. All right, thank yeah. you very much. 
Okay, so uh, I will not, I, I will try my best okay, to share with you um, the experience on the human resource management. And for today, to be specific, I would like to talk about performance management and employee development, which is, I believe that it's not in, only in the university, but... <coughs> Sorry. Uh, but it, it, also, it applies in the private organization or uh, any business. Okay, so I will, I will share with you um, the case of Prince of Songkhlan University, Patani Campus. Okay, so let me give you uh, uh, information about Prince of Songkhlan University first in case um, some of you might not know about PSU. I've just called PSU. So PSU have five campuses. The first campus is Patani. Okay, I'm from Patani campus. And we have a campus in Hat Yai, Phuket, Suratani, and Trang. So all these five provinces are in south of Thailand and all are connected to sea, uh, to sea shores. But I believe that Bengalu is nicer. Okay, so one day I, I, I hope that I can uh, visit Bengalu University. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, right, okay. So, um, of course, if you are in a university, uh, the ranking is quite important for all university, I believe that. So for BSU now, if we, we look at the QS World University ranking, we are at about 800 to 1,000. But the mission of university as well is to uh, drive further to go higher to the ranking. It's not just only the number, but the higher ranking, uh, the better image, and of course the better quality because all the uh, criteria they judge university is from a certain certain criteria and all is about the quality. But in order to, for university to reach higher ranking, we need to have more academic output. Okay, in, in Patani campus, okay, uh, Patani campus is one of the five campuses. We have in total, talk about employee, uh, we have as of uh, last year information, we have 1,338 employees overall and divided into two, we have 543 academic staff and supporting staff, we have 795 supporting staff. Uh, if you see the ratio here, we can see that the supporting staff is quite high. Uh, as I've shared with uh, many universities, like say from Europe or from uh, overseas, they try to make the number of supporting staff, uh, staff lower, either equal or lower than academic staff. But yeah, our university uh, also trying to, to, to arrange the number to make sure that the ratio is um, okay and then somehow the supporting staff is not too much but still can help to uh, to assist the academic staff and also assist to run and support all the activities in the supply chain. And in Patani campus we have uh, eight faculties and four institutions. The faculties here are uh, we have more on the social science and yeah, as the moderator uh, introduced earlier, I'm from humanities and social science uh, faculty. Okay, so let's see the in touch here. We are talking about performance management and uh, employee development. So these two are actually uh, are the pro different process, but these two different process are linked to each other. We see from the, the, the problem first. So um, I believe that in every university or every organization, they have annual performance appraisal. In PSU as well, we do have that. We have once a year. In the earlier, like last five years, we, we do have uh, twice a year, but since 2018, we started to have uh, once a year. So it's annual performance appraisal. Yeah, uh, every time we have the appraisal, and of course we should have the increment, okay? But what the management team from university feel that the quality of words not so increase, but the money of the increment somehow is topping up every year. 
So we see that yeah, the, the performance, uh, the employee's performance evaluation is exercise, but the performance management somehow is not really uh, take into order and manage the performance, uh, the, the result. So the objective here, of course, uh, HR, we want to enhance the performance uh, related pay system for the staff in university, both uh, academic staff and supporting staff. And here we, of course, we we are talking we are talking about the ranking. So we want to strengthen the academic competency of the academic staff. We want them to produce more academic output, and um, of course, with this uh, uh, the competency and the academic output, it will increase the number of academic staff with a higher academic rank, okay? And last but not least, this is to drive the quality of staff aligned with the university ranking requirement. <laughs> okay, so um, here are the strategy and activities undertaken to, to, to battle with the performance management and the, the, the division and mission. So we have two over here. The first one here, um, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting. Okay, maybe uh, some of the other university can uh, imply this into the policy later on. We have the policy say the 2% maximum salary increment entitled for the academic staff who has reached the specific year of service but yet to apply for the academic rank. For example, uh, uh, in Thailand, it's quite different from, from Malaysia or Indonesia or Philippines, I believe. Once we are in a university, if you, let's say you are with PhD holder, once you're the lecturer, you, you come into the university, you become a lecturer. We don't have senior lecturer, so we are lecturer. And uh, for the certain years, let's say for PhD holder, after two years of teaching experience, you must have all the academic output and uh, the teaching assessment to apply for the assistant professor. This, is, this would be the first academic rank. Okay, uh, and then with a certain certain criteria, uh, then after that, after a certain year, you need to apply you have to apply for, for lecturers in Thailand. For certain years, then you need to apply for the another rank, which is associate professor. So they have criteria and so on. And this criteria is applied throughout the country. Finally, I believe that this is for all the uh, lecturers that you, you, you want to have this the highest academic rank, which is the professor. Okay, so that would be the first one. Uh, this is the performance management for the academic staff. And the second strategy that we are doing that in the university is we apply the coaching in the university to em enhance employee performance. Let's see the first strategy first. Okay, so here are the responsibility, the units and what they do to exercise this policy to make sure that this change management will not uh, demotivated employees, especially the academic staff. So first we start from the management team. Management team is the top level management. They have certain vision and mission and uh, they draft out the rule and regulation for the performance and personal. And then they release out, they announce that, okay, this is the regulation that everyone in the university need to apply. And uh, next is they encourage academic staff to achieve higher academic rank. And this is very important. The last one is inspired by creating positive and supportive environment. Because if, you are, they, if the management or top level management are too serious, too tense, then uh, it might create the bad organization environment or the bad, very bad organization culture. Okay, so next, after management team has released the rules and regulation, another important role is the HR division, HRM division, okay? They need to make sure that communication uh, arrive to all, to the employees, especially to the academic staff, and the HR need to create awareness to all staff and resolve any misunderstood or conflicts. Because 
with the new policy, there should be um, yeah, many questions. Why and why? Why is so? Why so? And HR must be able to answer that and not to blame into the policy, but need to make sure that they have right understanding. HR needs to compile and computerize the performance appraisal result. And um, the last but not least is to be the contacting point for HR personnel in every faculty in Botany campus. Okay, next, uh, faculty dean. Yeah, this is the another management level. Very important that they need to encourage academic staff to achieve higher academic rank and need to inspire it by creating positive and supportive, supportive environment. Finally, uh, of course, we have the appraisal committee. The committee, as you all need to understand and well perceive of the new regulations on performance appraisal, you need to judge according to the criteria that how many papers on how many, uh, how many academic output that uh, will give certain, certain uh, marks for the employee uh, assessment. And finally, is to assess a staff value according to the policy. Okay, so with that policy released into, in the end of 2017, uh, we can see that number of the staff apply uh, or get the position is, uh, we get the higher, so which is very good. And um, yeah, we can see that in 2018, the number here of the assistant professor is the lowest academic rank, so we have increased. And uh, for those assistant professor have applied okay, to the associate professor, so we have all the number increase as well. And as of last year, yeah, the number might go up and down because we might have like uh, lecturers who are retired and then yeah, they might move to another university. But the number somehow is still fine, but we need more on the uh, number of the higher academic rank. With this policy and strategy, of course they give the impact in um, both short term and long term. They give the impacts here in terms of benefits and disadvantages. Let's see the benefits of short term. Of course we have the higher academic rank Okay, this higher academic rank somehow uh, create more uh, competency in the academic staff and it will be good for the students and learners that uh, they will be able to learn from professional and qualified lecturer. Uh, benefit in the long term, uh, we can say that university has more qualified academic staff with higher academic rank. And uh, with this higher academic rank, it will help to achieve higher uh, university ranking. And the image will be better and we can, can get more students and learners to apply into the university. And of course, you see students are our customer. So more customer is uh, more sustainable for the university too. But if we see the disadvantage on the other side, um, in long term, yeah, the staff are exhausted and some of them might be demotivated because in the past, they just, okay, they teach, they become a lecturer and they don't have to apply for any academic rank. But uh, from since that regulation released, they have to apply for higher academic rank. And some of them might be too occupied on the application procedures because I'm not sure in other countries, but in Thai, we have like paper, paperwork quite a lot and then have to uh, get those things ready. And HR department in each of the faculty also overloaded with the application because since they are, the staff are afraid of oh, 2% uh, maximum increment, so they try to apply first. Okay, and the disadvantage in the long term, we can see that uh, there might be some resistance from employee that um, they might cause the burnout incident. They, are, they might be too tired, teach a lot, and need to apply, and they feel tense, they feel, uh, they feel not happy that they might burn out. Okay, which in HR, we don't, we don't want any employee burn out. We want them to be, of course, happy in the organization. 
and um, this stressful intense performance evaluation might affect employee psychologically condition. Yeah, we're so afraid of that, but we are trying to manage both uh, the uh, the mentally and psychology of the academic staff. So those challenges that we apply in this. Uh, regulations or policy is uh, first is the resistance from employees. We can see that yeah, employee they for everyone hate change. Everyone don't like change. So uh, once there are change, they they of course they resist. They confuse. They might feel demotivated. But in the management team, we have to tackle the change management. And then um, this is very uh, very interesting. Sometimes they just want to apply first in, in number five here. So the submitted application uh, not so qualified. So they get all the application paper first, but maybe the out the the paper or the academic output is not so uh, qualified. And HR also overloaded. So many works need to handle the uh, application. <clears throat> And then uh, another challenge is to invite members of qualified committee to evaluate, evaluate all the, the application. So that those are the challenges. But it works as you see the outcome um, of the performance management in the first strategy. Next, uh, we, if you see the employee development, okay, uh, we can say that coaching in the university is uh, somehow help employee to have a better performance. And I believe that uh, yesterday I heard from um, Dr. Professor Nick Maharan, okay, uh, she was discussing about the coaching, uh, coaching entrepreneur. So coaching is somehow applied in many fields. It helps a lot. So uh, we should bring this activity into staff in the university as well. So we can help them to increase uh, performance. <clears throat> so the coaching is, um, uh, is this picture elaborate quite clear. This is the coach. Okay, this is the person who we in coach. Um, so people, everyone has so many thoughts. They, they are working for so many years, they have so many inputs, they have so many potential, but they just cannot make it clear. So uh, as the coach in the, uh, in the university or in anywhere, they have to try to uh, rearrange the thoughts and ideas so that they can have more systematically thought thinking. And then uh, once they are thinking systematically, they will be able to plan out what to do next and they will be able to surface the greatest potential. Uh, as you see here, the, the, the resource is from the ICF, International Coach Federation. They collect the result of coaching in the coaching experience in many, many organizations. So 99% are satisfied with the overall experience, and it helps to increase productivity. And uh, for the people, the employee also help to uh, create more positive people. As you can see, productivity, 70% uh, improve work performance, 61% improve on business management, 57% uh, help to improve time management, and 51% uh, improve on team effectiveness. And for the people, for the person who being coached, so they have better improved self-confidence, 80% is quite high. And 73% 70, improve on relationships, whether it's like uh, subordinates with the managers or colleagues relationships. 72% uh, improve on communication skills and 67% improve on life work balance. So uh, before we are going to coach somebody, we need to understand that uh, people is going to change if we meet certain certain criteria. And then uh, this is some point that we need to take note if we are going to try to change or coach someone. Uh, people will grow or change when there is a felt need. So we as a coach, we need to try to give them the feeling that, yeah, you need to change, you need to grow, you need to do better work, you need to improve your uh, performance. And people grow when they are encouraged by someone they respect. 
So we need to make sure that the somebody who, who is going to coach is the respectful person, either manager or any senior or top performers. Number three, people grow when their plans move from general goals to specific actions. So uh, from broad goals, they have more specific actions. What to do next? One, two, three. Number four, people grow as they move from a condition of lower to higher self-esteem. So if they have more confidence, higher self-esteem, they can do, they feel that they can do something, something new, something challenging. And last, okay, finally, people grow as they move from external to internal commitment. So the willing must be from the, 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 the person itself. They must feel, as number one, say that they must have a feeling that, okay, I want to change. And the model that uh, help, okay, help to uh, do or perform in the coaching session is you can apply the GROW model. Many organizations in, in Thailand also use GROW model. If you know CP, CP, uh, CP, uh, C, uh, CP is a very large company. Uh, they have they own 7-Eleven in Thailand and a lot, a lot of the, the, the company chain in Thailand. So grow model here, okay, very simple. G-R-O-W, -W. G stands for goals. So in the coaching session, it's the talking session. But the coach, the person who is going to coach someone will not tell they will not tell or say i mean will not will not explain or suggest anything but they are going to ask questions during the coaching session so during the goal okay the stage goal the first stage they ask oh, what is the objective what are the goals of your life what is the goal of your career path and so so ask the goal ask the future R is reality. Reality here is to ask where are you now? What is, what is the reality? So ask uh, the person who is being coached to do some self-assessment. Okay, the next stage after you talk, okay, you ask, ask more and more. So get the person who, who, are, who are getting coached to answer more and more questions uh, by you throw the open-ended questions. The stage three, all options. So here you can ask them what are the options that you can achieve the goal or what you can do to, to bridge the gap. Okay. Or you can ask any alternative uh, choices that you can do. Okay. And finally, in the blue is way forward. So the way forward here, uh, you can ask that, let's say, what are the actions? Huh. Anybody can help you or uh, where you want to start first. So again here, the person who is going to coach, a coach is to ask open-ended questions and try to get the person who's being coached and some more and more so that they can uh, say out what they are thinking in their minds. So the technique here, okay, as stated earlier, is first is to use open-ended questions. And very important is never judge the person you are coaching or their situation. You have to trust that, okay, they can do it. They have some potential. Another interesting uh, technique is that uh, when you are asking somebody else, do not ask multiple questions. So you ask one question, one, one question at a time. Okay, one, uh, once that question is answered or we're being discussed, then you throw another question. Uh, doctor, doctor, yeah? is it, um, it, it is a very interesting uh, presentation, but I think uh, you need to, to, to watch the time as well. Ah, okay, understand. Maybe you can write up yeah, within five minutes or so. Oh, sure, thank you very much. I think it's almost at the end of the All presentation. Right. Sure. Yeah, uh, yeah. So number four, the fourth technique is do not ask leading questions. Uh, make sure that you listen actively and uh, you clarify points made. Okay, uh, this is the such as, uh, the action plan that you can apply in you in, in your um, organization or your field too. Um, for like for PSU, we schedule one coaching session for three months for all employees, and we allocate time slot is about thirty minutes, and the coaching is to perform by the manager. And once uh, this discussion has been done, the summary of coaching will be recorded in the database. 
and this database once is saved uh, the acknowledgement will be sent to the person who is winning coach so that uh, they also can acknowledge that this is really what uh, they are talking in the discussion and the success factor of course we uh, we need to get support from top and middle level management and very important thing is the communication is very important uh, you need to communicate so that um, everyone have the same uh, level of understanding okay and um, your well-defined vision and mission of the university will help to uh, to get everyone have the same core values and they will strive to the same uh, goals yeah that would be it for me oh that's great yeah okay um it is a very interesting uh, presentation. I have so many questions, and I think uh, the rest of the universities as well have so many questions. But uh, I want to leave it there first, because we are coming to the question uh, later on during the discussion session. All right, so for now, I would love uh, to welcome uh, another speaker from San Beda University, uh, Professor Dr. Reverend Father M. A. Uh, Amaranan, Order of Saint Benedict. Uh, Father, how are you, Father? Can I say hello to the Father first? Hello, Professor Nazodral. Hello, good. How are you, I'm Father? I'm well. I hope you're doing well, also. Yeah, Father, we need your prayers, Father, in time like this. Please pray for us. We need prayers from everybody. Yes, prayers for one another. We yeah, yeah, prayers for one another, Father. Yeah, yeah. I, I've met you before, and um, I'm thinking of, I mean, to 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 see you again later on uh, when the pandemic is over. And then I would like to say that uh, Prof Tita really gave a good cooperation to me, and um, we would love uh, for some better to be our, you know, our network, uh, some or other. I mean, to be, you know, long lasting network. Thank you so much, Professor. I remember you well when you Yeah, came yeah, thank you. And you are part of our seed program. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. Okay, uh, Father, are you ready for the, I mean, for the presentation, for the keynote yes. speech? All thank right. you. All right. Okay, audience, um, I would love uh, for you to meet um, uh, the very special person. Uh, from San Beda University, uh, Professor Dr. Reverend Father M. A. A. Maranen, Order of San Benedict. He is actually the Rector President of San Beda University, but is a very, I mean, uh, down to earth person, very humble person. All right. Uh, for the educational background, uh, Father is actually graduated PhD degree at De La Salle University Philippines, Magna, and then um, um, master's in theology study at Mary Hill School of Theology, Philippines. And actually, father also got the uh, degree in economics at San Beda University, Philippines, and been awarded for Chaplain Award. Uh, the area of expertise, Father actually very well in educational planning and development, strategic visioning and goal setting for institution of learning, and as well as classroom supervisions and management. And Reverend Father has been practicing the mission and ministry of education for the last 30 years of his life. He is an active board trustee, consultant, and officer of 14 educational associations and non-governmental institutions in the Philippines. He is currently in the management board of 10 international associations and institutions, including his work as the vice chairman of ALN, Asian Learning Network. Reverend Father, uh, Reverend Father also, is the first rector president of San Beda University Manila and the 22nd rector president of the former San Beda College Manila. His leadership transformed the 118 years of 
old, uh, 118 years old Badek Chidin College into a full-fledged university, improved the level and number of accreditations of programs and initiated the school's achievement of ISO certification. He implemented the university's digital transformation program, boost the university's research program by establishing the Center for Research and Development, increase the faculty research grants, and so many things. He continuously expand the university's international linkages program by increasing the numbers of international networks and partners. And I believe today's uh, San Beda have another partner, which is uh, Universitas Bengkulu, and uh, maybe uh, from uh, Prince of Songkla University as well in uh, uh, Thailand. All right, Father, uh, the, the floor is yours. Please welcome. Thank you very much, Professor Nazodrol, for your very kind introduction. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, my dear friends from the Beehive International Social Innovation Conference. Thank you so much, Beehive Conference, for inviting me on this, our third conference. And thank you so much, University of Bengkulu, for hosting our prestigious conference. And uh, I would like to congratulate also our first speaker, Professor Nuzaida and uh, Vice Rector of Bengkulu for your welcome address. My presentation this morning will focus on the theme of the conference, which is on the social innovation entrepreneurship towards industrial revolution. And my brief discussion would simply settle on the education response, mission, and strategies. Thank you so much for the PowerPoint presentation. So as I said, my presentation would focus on education response, mission, and strategies on our highlighted conference topic on social innovation entrepreneurship. My introduction, I would like to say that during this pandemic time, it is more urgent that education institution be responsive on providing innovative and entrepreneurial program and activities. You know, innovation and entrepreneurship are generally considered key drivers towards social sustainable development amidst technological advancement. And I would say at this time, amidst critical pandemic time. The International Council for Small Business agreed that the role of entrepreneurship in improving the quality of life for ordinary people includes the very disadvantaged people. So that at this time of pandemic, if we say we have innovative program or we have entrepreneurial activities, this must focus on alleviating the life of our people. And in a bigger scale, this will involve contributing to a more resilient infrastructure, promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization and more innovative oriented programs, both for the private and the government side. So we define innovation for the social sector as something that which takes the form of a new social product, service, or method that creates change. So we say one is an innovation if it performs better than existing solution and for which the value accrues primarily to society. On the other hand, we say an activity or a program is entrepreneurial if it's a change agent fashion something that is uh, impactful and it is done through creation of new self-reliant activities. So for our education response, we say our number one, letter A, education and entrepreneurship are extraordinary opportunities that need to be interconnected to develop human capital required 
for the future. Such was the acknowledged significant response between the entrepreneurship and education that in the 2019 review of the Sustainable Development Goals, entrepreneurship has been associated in particular with the Sustainable Development Goals, number four of quality education. I assume that you are familiar with the UN Sustainable Development Goals so that when the social Sustainable Development Goals number four aims to substantially increase the number of youth and adults who have relevant skills, including technical skills, employment, and decent jobs. Development goal number eight, on the other hand, promote development-oriented policies that support productive activities, decent job creation, and more importantly, creativity and innovation among young people to encourage growth in their initial enterprises. Letter B, the second slide, please. The next slide. We see the response of education in the form that social innovation and education are significant fields that can address critical societal issues with expected sustainable results. Worth mentioning here is the fact that social entrepreneurship and education have been recognized way back in the 1980s as significant fields that can help address critical social issues. This obviously could likewise be the origin of the academic attention that many of our universities are doing now, providing entrepreneurship programs that collaborate and implement among the different activities. They are structured and institutionalized with their partners to provide more personalized learning in a larger environment. On the second aspect of our education mission, so we say number one is that uh, if ever there is a first mission, can we have the previous slide first? Maybe I will just give the signal, okay? So our first mission is that education has an inherent job or mission to provide unique innovation, entrepreneurship, and business models that make positive contributions to public social goods. We mean by this that uh, since the academe has been seen to have a specific entrepreneurial and social mission as a major provider of innovation, this can be done when we introduce students to unique business models that make a positive contribution for the public good. When we hear renowned universities offering these courses since the early 1990s that we cannot think more of social entrepreneurship in a very wide scale, then there has been an explosion of these courses around the globe right now, including our own Asian region. So in this particular aspect, we know that education can truly be a good catalyst. Letter B, our next slide. We believe that another mission for education is that it has an enormous responsibility to accelerate social progress and expansion of opportunities through its relevant innovation and entrepreneurship degree programs. Nothing more can be more immensely important to us when education can truly provide relevant curriculum. In the 2019 study of the social entrepreneurship in education, it presented the findings that social entrepreneurship courses of respondent universities around the world, notably in the Western world and in Asian region, social entrepreneurship degrees are aligned with business schools. And we know that uh, entrepreneurship undergraduate 
and graduate degree programs, even our certificate courses are offered and institutionalized among our Asian neighboring countries with due recognition of its importance in accelerating social progress and expansion of opportunities. So we just say that uh, education has to explore more opportunities to achieve this mission. On the educational strategy, we say that uh, education institutions have to widen connection by establishing partnerships, forming networks, and better innovation and entrepreneurship curriculum design. More often than not, many universities around the world have attempted providing these much sought programs, but then what we must really be working on is that our higher institution must truly really work a system whereby we support one another more than providing a better program than the rest. It is good to have a collaborative effort when there is no university left behind in providing innovation and entrepreneurial program. So that in the midst of an increasing attention on the entrepreneurship and social mission, the global journey of universities must be towards development that mark a number of industrial revolution. So I would rather say that uh, in this particular aspect, uh, our experience here among our universities, University of Benkulu, UMK, Prince Songkla University, we internationalize and collaborate with one another in the area of academics, the research and community. And we have our examples being members of the ASEAN Learning Network, among others, that we have implemented and shared many related programs, projects, and activities in these three areas. Again, Eli, I uh, want to reiterate how important it is for the neighboring universities in Asia to work on international collaboration of workshops, lecture series, joint research presentation, community immersion, both physical and virtual means. Of course, worth mentioning here is our social enterprise for economic development, the SEED program. You know, that is the flagship program of the ALN network. And in the same manner, many networks of educational institutions like our very own Beehive Network Association, you have various strategic programs crafted for entrepreneurship laboratory, for entrepreneurship accelerator and training programs. Our last sec, but not the least uh, strategy is that uh, learnings from social innovation and entrepreneurship program have to create transformational process to connect students with higher community productivity. I would like to highlight here, simple as it is, that in Asia and maybe around the world, our learnings of innovation and entrepreneurship program must have a transformational process. Many times we have left to our students to do things on their own while they are already in the field. While that is good that we can develop our students to be self-reliant and to be self-independent. But then the important thing is that the transformational process begin inside the classroom. So for example, we have experiential learning a knowledge creation process through the transformation of experiences. And this has been acknowledged to be capable of producing entrepreneurs. And second, again, I repeat, is the importance of social learning and social entrepreneurship, knowing that we continue to be among the countries here in Asia that is yet to continue to be developed. And it is important that our students connect well in our communities and in many other campus-based opportunities. 
And uh, in conclusion, I say that uh, to ensure sustainable development as this our conference is working on for our Asian universities, the attainment of the sustainable de and development goals, we are given the opportunity to become social innovators and social entrepreneurs. But we can do that primarily when we are truly service oriented. This is a very fundamental need for that concerted efforts of all the different sectors of the society, we need to work together. Innovative social entrepreneurs will certainly succeed in the incoming industrial revolution. So that if our Beehive conference is looking forward to industrial revolution number five, then our social innovators have to find solutions for social issues and concerns. Our social entrepreneurs have to create new products and services to meet the identified needs. And as I said again, the academe, the educational sector has to expedite its contribution in developing adaptable future leaders, leaders who are resilient, leaders who are change agents to meet the inevitable innovative, transformative, and entrepreneurial industrial revolution. I end my sharing with a high commendation for the efforts being done by our Beehive International Social Innovation Conference. Can we give them a warm applause? <laughs> to the organizers for highlighting social innovation and entrepreneurship as we move towards our shared future of another industrial revolution. And finally, as for our keepsake one, remember education will always be an agent of change and it is vested anew with the full responsibility to transform the academe as a major catalyst and the universities as potential network in accomplishing the gigantic social innovation and entrepreneurial program. This we do for the common good of our young people who is not only the future, but they are now the present of industrial revolution. Thank you very much for listening. And as we say in the Philippines, mabuhay. Maraming salamat po. Salamat po. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Reverend Father, on a very a brief, short, but very meaningful uh, presentation. All right. Now we are going to have some uh, question and answers from the uh, from the public actually. So if if any of you have the question to Dr. Nur Saida or to Reverend Father, please uh, you can write from the Zoom group chat. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, I would like to ask, um, you know, I, I really interest, I, I'm, I'm really, uh, uh, you know, captured with your word. Education is the agent of change. Yeah, so everything starts with the education, the awareness, you know, to change the society, it starts with that. And then it's related with what Dr. Nur Sahida mentioned as well on the, you know, because lecturer, lecturer is the agent. I mean, it's like the agent that provide the education for the students. So um, we need to make sure that all the academic staff, you know, very motivated, you know, really have passions. So the reward need to be at par or need to be, uh, you know, always be there so that they are keep uh, their motivation very high. So uh, uh, Dr. 
Nur Sahida, um, how PSU respond to the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, is there any retrenchment or is there any, uh, you know, any policies regarding the human resource? because I, I believe that it happened everywhere and I'm not sure whether it's happened at the Sambeda University or not, whether you need to, I mean, you need to put people on hold, you need to retrench people or, you know, I, I don't want to say this, but need to fire people because of uh, not enough fun or, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Nazro. Um, we are in the education field so I think somehow uh, for the employees are still secured. <laughs> yeah, still secured uh, for the time being uh, because as we see in the news, many, I mean, many organizations, especially the private organizations, yeah, they start to uh, give like unpaid leave. So they can leave like, well, let's say uh, the, the, a lot, a lot of, of let's say business, the hotel and all that because there's no business, so they need to on hold people. But for uh, university, we are still secured, but in the future might not be because the with the COVID, we can see that okay, we don't we we do not need a really really physical experience. We can learn from online. We can yeah. learn from. Um, e-learning mm. and that will somehow impact to the lecturer that the number of lecturer will be uh, decreased and once the number of employee or the lecturers or academic staff decrease the number of the supporting staff will be as well decreased I see I see yeah all right um uh, Reverend Father, what, what do you think happened at the San Beda University? Can, can you share with us on the employment, uh, I mean, in the current uh, pandemic of COVID-19? Thank you so much, Professor Nazrol, to share this. In a national scale in the Philippines, our Department of Labor provides retrenchment as long as we give the necessary separation pay for them. But I would like to joyfully share with you that in San Beda, we continue to make sure that everyone is in the boat. I mean, they continue to be secure and we do our best that we keep them. Uh, it's a way of managing, of communicating and dealing with the problem that we work together as one. Exactly, exactly. All right, okay. Um, uh, it happened everywhere actually, but I believe in, for the education, uh, for the education sector, it's, it's one of the public sector been protected by the government. So we are still lucky so far. So uh, for those students uh, out there, you know that we are doing our best actually to protect your interests because Educations, education is really a prime sector for every country, for every society. To change the society for a better one, you need to make sure the education is there. There is no compromise for that. All right. Okay. Um, uh, Father, uh, would you mind to share with us? Uh, I mean, since previously you've been, I mean, San Beda University been participated participated in seed and as well and in ALN what does the the positive impact it gives to the society actually because we would like to replicate that for our basic program and I'm sure I would love to to include uh, San Beda University as part of our you know uh, committee partners uh, for beehive social uh, innovation. the seed or the social enterprise and uh, kind of development of our program in the ASEAN Learning Network has been very successful extension program. Uh, first, on the side of the academy, on the side of the students, they have learned not only to study, but they want their study to be connected with the life of our people in the community. So in that way, 
we realize that our students learn to serve the community. So it is not simply being limited in the book that they read, but that the book that they read must be relevant and must be applied to the community in our country. Second, on the side of the community of, of the extension program that we have there, the life of our community is truly alleviated, meaning to say people who used to have no work are given job. For example, if they used to have plantation of cabbage, but the cabbage are not sold. Cabbage are simply spoiled in the farm. Then the seed program will empower the community how to develop their product. It can be transported to a bed to a new bottled vegetables, how, how it could be cooked, how it could be transported. And in this way, seed program has empowered our community to become self-sufficient, not only in terms of the food they eat, but also of financial need. And then thirdly, the important thing is that uh, through our communication between the academe and the community, it is important to note that the research orientation where our students partner with the rest continue to look forward to contribute of how can we make better our activities. So the tripartite program of the SID program, the students or the academe, the community, our extension program, and the research side of the activity would collaboratively work together for the good of the community. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I, I'm very much uh, agree with you, uh, Father. The impact is so much on the community and that's what we expect for our BC as well. We would love to grow, but now we, we are glad that at least we have four universities all together, Universitas Bengkulu, University Malaysia Kelantan, Prince of Songkla University, and as well as San Beda. I mean, to work on this one as well, to focus on the community part. Uh, but uh, for BC, we do have another, uh, another, another, I mean, platform, which is the conferences. I mean, for C, uh, they'll just uh, the, uh, you know, the community itself, you know, uh, but for BSIC, we do have another platform, which is the conferences so that people can always, uh, I mean, give their, their new write up, the new ideas on social innovation, I mean, to, 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 to contribute to the academia. Um, Dr. No Sahida, um, you did mention that, uh, uh, you know, maybe later on, we were not going to hire so many lecturers, I mean, because uh, studies can be conducted online. And how, how actually we can respond to social innovation to, to the time like this, actually? How, how can we help the community? Because we need to be, you know, face to face for the community. We need to, if we would like to help them, we need to go out. But if you go out, uh, either we, we help them or we get, uh, the, the, the pandemic, we, we get the, the virus. So how, how we can respond to this actually? Yeah. How we can help our community during this time? Yeah, Dr. Nur Saida, yes, please. Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that other university has um, activities as well to help the communities, especially the ones surrounded the campus. For PSU, uh, during the, the really bad the pandemic at that time, I think in like March, uh, yeah, the, the, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that during the second quarter, <clears throat> somehow, um, yeah, lectures are somehow offline already. I mean, we teach online already. And then what university helped to the social and the community is um, we did, we, we gather staff and employees. So we uh, we somehow we did the the face mask because at that time is somehow is out of the market the, the the facial mask. So we do the 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 one from fabric, and then we do the handmade. So we did that. Okay, we did a lot. We gathered a lot of stuff. We did the face mask. 
the facial mask, and then we did the, the face shield. Yeah. The face shield with, with uh, some protection. Uh, we open for the donation because sometimes uh, they, they donate, but it's not really arrived into the, 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 the place, the community, the, 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 the household. So we get there that from alumni and um, from any other people. And then we have a group that, okay, we go out and then we have to distribute those, uh, those necessary stuff. Right. All right. Okay. Um, I would love to hear, come, come again, come again, yeah. We did help the, the staff in hospital. So ah, the front line is, yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we work a lot on that time. Yeah, the, the front line. So we help them in preparing foods. So mm. they, they, they do uh, take care of the patients, uh, swab tests and all that. But for our MC, we help to cooking and then um, distribute the, the lunch box and the dinner box to them. Right, right, right. Agreed. Um, I, I would like to hear again from uh, Prof Tita. Prof Tita, are you there? I would like to hear from you again on how, how uh, San Beda University responds to the COVID-19 in terms of helping the community, the surrounding community. Prof Tita, would you like to share? Okay, uh, good morning everybody. First of all, congratulations and much appreciation to Dr. Noor of PSU and Father Arloy, our dearest rector president for the excellent presentation of the keynote speeches. Uh, Dr. Naz, there are a lot of activities that have been done and are still being done by different universities. San Beda is one of them. And basically, it has been through our institutional uh, center, the Community Engagement Center, which is under the rector president. And we have had a lot of specific activities to help, in particular, our partner communities with SEED. Uh, the same thing, our alumni foundation, our different colleges are having their own specific uh, activities aside from the institutional. So basically, everybody is so intent on trying to be of service to the needy communities right. near San Beda, uh, far from San Beda, and those which are our partners for a long time. And there are even some specific offices working on their own, communicating on their own, or even individual employees working on their own to help the different communities, different families during this time. And all of this are under the office of the director president aside from the institutional activities that we're having with our community engagement center. Right. Well, uh, I believe that we are all done, I mean, so much to make sure that uh, everybody, the surrounding community at least stay safe and mm -hmm. to, to give a little bit of comfortness to them through, I mean, through this uh, very hard times, right, bro? There are some, uh, distribution of food packages and supplies. Mm -hmm. There are also psychological services to exactly. those who are emotionally distressed mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. anxious because of the different conditions. Right, right, right. Um, I think we, we cannot leave the psychological part as well because in time like this, people cannot go out. They've been confined into their own space. They cannot go to see other people, cannot socializing around. and. It never happened in the last century. So this is new for everybody. So I think we need that, uh, you know, to help them in terms of the psychological part as well. If you if you have the counselor, maybe, uh, yeah. you know, those who cannot cope, we, we can give the counseling to them, right? So this is something that uh, we can relate with Father Rector's mentioning about innovation. So right. since we cannot go face to face, we can do e-guidance, e-health services, e-medical services, and e-consultations among right. others. Right. So this will be very helpful, especially at this True. time. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Prof. Tita. And I would love to hear I mean, someone from the Universitas Bengkulu, maybe Dr. Henry, Dr. Henry. Would you love to respond something, Dr. Henry? 
Uh, I mean, in terms of how, how did uh, Universitas Bengkulu uh, respond to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, uh, helping the surrounding community around uh, Universitas Bengkulu? Okay, uh, thank you very much for a great presentation yeah, from uh, Prof. Aloy and uh, Dr. Suida. Dr. Nusaida, yeah, Nusaida yes, yeah, yes. Saying, yeah. I think uh, pandemic, yeah, pandemic COVID-19, yeah, influence all people in the world, yeah, uh, exactly. include yeah, University of Bengkulu, but mm -hmm. we try to cover, yeah, to cover it uh, by uh, some strategy, yeah, like uh, online system, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, online online teaching right. yeah and make a uh, student uh, do practice by self uh, at home or at village yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. the uh, online teaching right right uh, I think maybe half influence yeah reduce the 50 percent 50 percent economy uh, 50 percent. Uh, understanding of student, yeah, but we try to to cover it. Right. But uh, the entrepreneurship uh, for student uh, still uh, present, yeah? mm -hmm. still uh, work well, yeah. Mm -hmm. The student can uh, operate, yeah, can do uh, entrepreneurship activity, activate uh, by uh, supervising from the campus, yeah. I by see. online online system. I think like this, no one. Yeah, uh, we can uh, give the instruction mm. uh, for student. Yeah, mm. by the good uh, learning material. I see. I see. Yeah, the good module, good module like this. Yeah, mm. and we can support uh, from the the far. Yeah, right. The right. Far. Uh, I think, I think like this. Yeah. Is now uh, this semester, uh, I did. Uh, three class of entrepreneurship. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, the student can uh, produce or make uh, innovation. Yeah, I see. At home, yes. yeah, mm -hmm. uh, with uh, develop the local potential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like uh, uh, my region in Churup, yeah, in Highland, mm -hmm. uh, the farmer produce the coffee. Uh, oh, right. Student try to make the various product from coffee, right. uh, like uh, coffee bean, yeah, mm. coffee bean roasting, coffee bean, uh, candy, bean candy, mm. uh, milk, milk coffee, and they try to to packing, yeah, to make the good packing, and we support from uh, Bengkulu mm. uh, the packing, the packing material like this. Yeah, yeah. I think the uh, lecturer, yeah, lecturer, yeah. Uh, can support uh, anytime, anytime the student to develop the entrepreneurship like this. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I I am proud yeah, for some student yeah, uh, can persistent in pandemic yeah, mm -hmm. and can uh, produce the economic activity and uh, another benefit uh, while the pandemic virus are uh, still occur now. Right, right. I think I think like this, yeah. Right. I think we can uh, uh, develop, yeah, develop the entrepreneurship based on uh, knowledge, yeah. Knowledge, uh, each uh, study program, like mm. from agriculture, they can develop uh, entrepreneurship from from uh, their their expertise, like from uh, plant protection. Yeah, mm -hmm. like something like this. Uh, food technology, uh, they can produce uh, some new products yeah, uh, mm -hmm. to make the new innovation. Mm -hmm. I think like that. Uh, the student from law faculty, uh, from uh, social science faculty also like this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also student from uh, language study, yeah, mm -hmm. also make, make the private course at home, okay. Uh, make uh, I think uh, many kind, many kind, yeah, many kind of 
uh, opportunity, exactly. uh, opportunity. Mm-hmm. I think like this. Right, right. Uh, the so pandemic you know, uh, uh, cannot stop uh, right. activity. Yeah, yeah. Okay? Right. Cannot yeah. stop innovation. I right, think. right. Exactly. We must uh, support anytime. Yeah, okay. yeah. Something like that. Thank you. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So even though during the pandemic, uh, Universitas Bengkulu always have the innovations, always uh, know how to supervise their students yeah. uh, in terms of the entrepreneurship. So the activity does not stop. It just maybe the the medium is changed by your online or you know things that doesn't require face to face interactions. But the rest, the knowledge is still there, and you you provide the knowledge to your students accordingly. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, well, uh, maybe we can have the last word. Uh, I would like to ask first from Dr. Nor Sahida. Last word, Dr. Nor Sahida, before I can conclude uh, the presentation. I mean this. A keynote speech. Yes, thank you. Um, so it was a very great discussion and a very um, great uh, event for today that we all are sharing um, certain certain areas and topics so that we can help our social our community to uh, have a better place. Yep. So continue and hope to see you again on next year. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Nasaida. And uh, Reverend Father, any last word from you? My last word is congratulations to the organizers of the Beehive International Social Innovation Conference for being a ch- channel and agent of change. This is the time that uh, universities in Asia really have to work together so that we can overcome the challenges and we can turn the challenges into opportunities to become of better service to our countrymen. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I mean, for, for my part, actually, I, I again, I would like to rephrase what uh, Father has been mentioned just now. Uh, Father's mentioned a few times on work together, working together and working together. And I think at time like this, it is very important for us to work together and to overcome the pandemic. It's not a one-man show, actually. We need to work as a community to fight the pandemic and you know, to, to stay survive uh, for, for everyone, you know, for ourselves, for the community, for our country, and as well as for the for everyone. All right. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Father. Uh, thank you so much, Dr. Nur Sahida. Uh, thank you so much, uh, the audience. And then uh, uh, I'll give back uh, to the committee, actually, to the basic committee for the next session. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for of the keynote speech. And thank you to Dr. Wal Muhammad Nazral. Okay, our next agenda is giving a certificate from University of Bengkulu to a kid that's paid first, to Miss Mrs. Nur Sahida Hussain. And then next is giving a certificate sorry um Okay, this is the certificate to Mrs. Nur Saida Hussain from University of Bengkulu. Okay, and next is giving a certificate from University of Bengkulu to Ekena Speed, Professor Alessius Maranan. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, giving a certificate for from University of Bengkulu to a moderator, Dr. Wan Muhammad Nazra. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I have it myself. Okay, thank you so much. Thank and, you. Okay, next agenda. Um, please your attention to all participants.
to all participants. Um, please fill in your personal data on the link that we share on Zoom chat to get your e-certificate. Okay, and please attention to all participants back to room one in here around 1.30, join the closing ceremony and best paper announcement. Okay, the next is um, to all participants. Please your attention to the paper participant. Please be prepared and log in in room Zoom for paper presentation. Room one, led by Chairman Dr. Wan Muhammad Nazrul, and room two, uh, with Chairman Ms. Saprianti Eka Putri, room three, with Chairman Mr. Betro, and room four, with Chairman Mr. Sandy. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our discussion. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Dinda Rahmadani Putri. I'm sorry if I have any mistakes. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Noor Sahida. Hi. Thank you, Father Aloy. Thank you, Dr. Naz. Dr. Uh, Lizar, thank you very much. And you need. Bye. Thank you, Mbak Nur Saida. We met you last time, right? Yeah, we met last year in UMK. Yeah. Miss you. Thank you, Prof. Brother. Thank you. Prof. Ita. <laughs> Thank you. Hope to see you again there at UNIT. Yeah. <laughs> Hope, Hope to see you there. Next time. After yes. After we sign the offer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Take care. Take care. See you. Take care. We should go to PSU. Dr. Oh, yeah. Nur Sahida. We love to. We should yeah. go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. See you next thank time. You, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Suprianti. Thank you. Then see you here. Okay, thank you everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Take care. Yeah, you. To all participants, this is room one, so you can go back here at 11 a.m.
uh, for the paper presentation. Thank you.
tidak pernah melupakan tanggung jawab sosial kami kepada bangsa, khususnya Provinsi Bungkulu dengan aksi yang berkelanjutan demi kemajuan bersama. Assalamualaikum and a very good afternoon to all of you. And now we are coming to the second day, the last day for the presentation, the conference presentations. So um, today we should start with, um, I have the list here, let me see the list. We should start with Norazlina Ismail, then uh, Teddy Oswari, uh, Cindy Sepniat, and Nur Hamza. We just have four presenters today. Sorry to interrupt, sir. I want to inform that Norazlina is from Thai because the paper is not ready. Sir? How about Nur Azlina Ismail? Are you here already? No. Uh, I want to inform that Nur Azlina is cancelled, sir, because the paper is not ready. Uh, uh, can you speak louder, please? Can you speak louder, Phil Finkan? Yes. Mm. You mentioned something just now? 
Nurazlena is cancelled, sir, because the paper is not ready. All right. Okay. How about uh, Teddy? Teddy Oswari. Sorry, sir. Teddy and Cindy cancelled because no confirmation. All right. Okay. Teddy and Cindy. So uh, we we just have uh, the last one, Nur Hamza, right? Nur Hamza, Willy Abdullah, uh, Faru Zaman, and Slam Abidodo, and Kamaluddin. Relationship of team and negotiation commitments on moderation of organizational commitments in handling conflicts integrated in the team. Empirical study at Indonesia, supposedly at Indonesia, not Indonesia. Nur Hamza, Nur Hamza, ada Nur Hamza. Sorry, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nur Hamza, um, ada. All of the people participant are cancelled. So if I see, I see. Yeah. So everyone all right. in here can join to another room three, four. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. That's all. Thank you so much. Uh, we we meet up in another room. All right. Thank you. Sorry, sir. Be please be prepared for photo session. Yeah. Photo session. Yeah. All right. Okay. Right. Please turn on your video. Thank you. Wait. One, two, three. Wait. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Thank you, yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, yeah. see you again. See you. Sorry of the presentation. Please come back to this room and join the closing ceremony. Okay. Thank you.
Over half a century ago, Prince of Songkhla University, or PSU, has been established as the first source of higher education in southern Thailand. Today, although there are hundreds of universities throughout Thailand, PSU is still one of the country's leading institutions of higher education. We use our research-based knowledge and experiences accumulated through the last 50 years to create practical innovations to improve the quality of life in our southern communities. With a broad vision, we pioneered several programs. With the continuous aim to make progress for Thai economics and society on the global stage. Having started with only two campuses and three faculties, we have at present five campuses situated at key locations of the southern region, covering every field of knowledge by 37 faculties, research centers, and various other academic agencies. We provide knowledge to students in 320 academic fields, corresponding to the needs of the region, country, and the global community. Our consistently high educational quality is maintained by continuously improving our educational programs to be up to date with the latest advances of international academia. Our learning resources not only provide academic content, but also enlighten students in terms of both mindset and experiences. While education quality is ensured by our highly Over half a century ago, Prince of Songkhla University, or PSU, has been established as the vision, we pioneered several programs. Over half a century ago, Prince of Songkhla University, or PSU, has been established as the first source of higher education in southern Thailand. Today, although there are hundreds of universities throughout Thailand, PSU is still one of the country's leading institutions of higher education. We use our research-based knowledge and experiences accumulated through the last 50 years to create practical innovations to improve the quality of life in our southern communities.
With a broad vision, we pioneered several programs. With the continuous aim to make progress for Thai economics and society on the global stage. Having started with only two campuses and three faculties, we have at present five campuses situated at key locations of the southern region, covering every field of knowledge by 37 faculties, research centers, and various other academic agencies. We provide knowledge to students in 320 academic fields, corresponding to the needs of the region, country, and the global community. Our consistently high educational quality is maintained by continuously improving our educational programs to be up to date with the latest advances of international academia. Our learning resources not only provide academic content, but also enlighten students in terms of both mindset and experiences. While education quality is ensured by our highly qualified academics, experienced instructors and professional educators of global renown. Our five campuses offer safe academic environments in peaceful, natural surroundings, containing a cohesive academic community that cultivates integrity and a keen sense of social awareness. We are united in embracing diversity, which serves as a foundation to our peaceful, multicultural society. Our educational programs have been developed together with accordance with research, utilizing resources, culture, wisdom, and economics surrounding our five campuses on the Thai Peninsula. This enabled us to become a leader in various types of academic fields, particularly those relevant to the fundamental potential of the South. Our constant determination to enhance the university's competence and mobilize Thai society resulted in PSU becoming a research university with new sources of knowledge. We apply our experiences, expertise, and resources to respond to the most pressing social and environmental issues of our time. We also learn how to apply traditional wisdom to preserve and maintain our cultural heritage. We create new economic opportunities based on the productivity profile of the region. We create mechanisms of propagating practical knowledge to entrepreneurs. We introduce modern innovations to assist in the creation of new alternative industries and services. We offer improved medical and public health services while constantly pushing the boundaries of medical science knowledge in order to develop our country to be the center of healthcare in ASEAN. We communicate our expertise to the outside world through several networks and means in order to disseminate knowledge, share ideas, and foster a lifelong learning behavior among people of all ages and occupations. PSU is more than just a university. We provide education to all levels, from preschool to PhD. In addition to benefiting all social sectors, PSU also produces alumni widely successful in various professions.
Besides teaching in classrooms, our instructors also reach out to communities and propagate practical knowledge to people of all ages and educational levels. In addition to working in laboratories, our researchers also work on palm plantations, rubber plants, fishing boats, in the mountains, under the sea, and in remote forest villages. Besides working on campus, our staff kindly helps people in need outside the university as well. The PSU community closely follows the resolution of His Royal Highness Prince Mahidon Aduliade, the Prince Father. Let consideration of personal gain take second place to the overall benefits of mankind, good fortune, wealth, and prestige, and come naturally to those who are spiritually dedicated to their work. This resolution has been the guiding foundation of PSU people's ideals and practices for the last 50 years. In the next decade and beyond, the PSU community will continue carrying out these missions with the determination to make major progress. Continuously striving to find new sustainable methods to advance our society for the benefit of mankind.
Over half a century ago, Prince of Songkhla University, or PSU, has been established as Today, although there are hundreds of universities throughout Thailand, As far as the eyes can see, Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, you 
University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources with incited progress and competitive spirit. This great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other. Until it is final. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources with incited progress and competitive spirit. This great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us.
encouraging academic CVTs to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future. The future of Bengkulu and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world.
Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. In 
encouraging academic CVTs to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future. The future of Bengkulu and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. The green view of Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. 
The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the career's generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world 
build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world.
unique cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, 
to reach the desired dreams. To welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures. A home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never tries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of education are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university in this millennial era we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, 
free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other, so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifested by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university in this millennial era we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants.
from the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nation. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. The green view of Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established ensuring the challenge of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be concured. 
Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university in this millennial era we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge but also as a container for the formation of human characters competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants from the classrooms we prepare the greatest generation golden generation with burning competitive spirit From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. The green view of Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education with the passion that never dries out and with
with the struggle and support of every element. In 1982, it was founded the Fourth State University in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind 
the green view of Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia 
which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world, to build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university in this millennial era we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge but also as a container for the formation of human characters competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants from the classrooms we prepare the greatest generation Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. 
In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other, so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. College activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world, to build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenge of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities 
and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters, competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting
Shanti. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline is far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out, and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters, competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. 
we wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world, to build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Behind the green view of Sumatra land, extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never tries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university in this millennial era we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions. 
coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other, so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. College activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world, to build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. 
and developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. The green view of Sumatra land extending from north to south, the coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu Province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources, 
with incited progress and competitive spirit. This great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenge of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all ages of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other, until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college activities means determining a future, the future of Bengkulu, and the future of Indonesia. We wish to prepare the best supplies to welcome the new Indonesia, which is strong and independent. Our responsibility as the next generation must be realized. We realize it in the form of community service. From here, we prepare ourselves to face the new world build the future, to reach the desired dreams, to welcome the expected goals. From here, from Bengkulu, for Indonesia, reaching the world. Sumatra land extending from north to south, the 
coastline as far as the eyes can see. Bengkulu becomes a home for diverse ethnics and cultures, a home for various biots, exotic rare flora. The diversity of Bengkulu makes it unique, cannot be found anywhere else. Starting from the establishment of Bengkulu province in 1968, it becomes an obligation to build a state higher education. With the passion that never dries out and with the struggle and support of every element, in 1982, it was founded the first state university in Bengkulu. University of Bengkulu, the biggest higher education institution in Bengkulu, has important roles to maintain and to develop all of existing potentials. From the land of Rafflesia, University of Bengkulu produce characterized human resources. With incited progress and competitive spirit, this great ideal of higher education is manifest by the scientific development based on the needs of time. Education facilities are established, ensuring the challenges of rapid development. The quality of educators are continuously being improved because the world must be conquered. Developing education and research is a big mission for us. Encouraging academic activities to produce work with copyright of intellectual property. Implementing service in accordance with the needs of local to international communities. And developing good university management system is an absolute thing for the vision of becoming world-class university. In this millennial era, we understand that education is not just a media to gain knowledge, but also as a container for the formation of human characters. Competitive human wishes to learn and to understand what the world wants. From the classrooms, we prepare the greatest generation. Golden generation with burning competitive spirit. From the classrooms, we develop knowledge to serve the nation and beloved major nature. This university is the estuary for knowledge seekers from various directions, coming from all age of our country, even from overseas. In this place, we share our ideas with each other, understanding each other until it is finally created a beautiful harmony in diversity. From here, we create works, we blend creative ideas of each individual into one. Here, we develop every self-potential, free to express ourselves, uniting perception in the difference. For us, it is very important to build a network in order to be connected with each other so the movement of time can be exceeded along with our vision. For us, college
We create mechanisms of propagating practical knowledge to entrepreneurs. We introduce modern innovations to assist in the creation of new alternative industries and services. We offer improved medical and public health services while constantly pushing the boundaries of medical science knowledge in order to develop our country to be the center of healthcare in ASEAN. We communicate our expertise to the outside world through several networks and means in order to disseminate knowledge, share ideas, and foster a lifelong learning behavior among people of all ages and occupations. PSU is more than just a university. We provide education to all levels, from preschool to PhD. In addition to benefiting all social sectors, PSU also produces alumni widely successful in various professions. Besides teaching in classrooms, our instructors also reach out to communities and propagate practical knowledge to people of all ages and educational levels. In addition to working in laboratories, our researchers also work on palm plantations, rubber plants, fishing boats, in the mountains, under the sea, and in remote forest villages. Besides working on campus, our staff kindly helps people in need outside the university as well. The PSU community closely follows the resolution of His Royal Highness Prince Mahidon Adule. for the last 50 years. In the next decade and beyond, the PSU community will continue carrying out these missions with the determination to make major progress. Continuously striving to find new sustainable methods to advance our society for the benefit of mankind. Bank Pembangunan Daerah memulai usahanya sebagai lembaga keuangan bank sejak tanggal 7 April 1971 dan diresmikan pada tanggal 13 April 1971. Komitmen kami terus memberikan yang terbaik menghadiri kami kesejahteraan bagi nasabah dan masyarakat provinsi.
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you to all participants. Now we will close ceremony and announce of best paper. Based on the evaluation of the external and internal from organizational committee, these are three papers that got selected as the best paper for the conference. We can offer for selected paper to be opportunity published in Journal National Association, also scopus list of index journal with term and condition and additional fee will be chair will be charged okay the third best paper is the effect of the third best paper is the effect of inflation on the number of medium small micro enterprises 2016 to 2019 in Sukoharjo Regency with the first author Sulis Tiono, the second author, Irma Nuria Ningsi, the third author, Friska Natasha Florentina. Okay. This award, this award is given to authors of the third best paper. Okay. The second best paper is the relationship between attitude, subjective norm, and perceived behavioral control toward campus food bank program among university students. With the first author, Nurul Hafizah Motiasin, the second author, Fadila Hanim Aryani. The third author, Abdullah Nurhaiza Nordin. The fourth author, Nurnadida Nordin. The fifth author, Nurdaila Mat. The sixth author, Nurhazila Nikmut. The seventh author, Sita Zomanika Mat Zaid. And this award is given to authors of the second best paper. Okay, the, the first best paper is Market Maven as Customer Physiological Influence, influence on Retail, retail Industry in Indonesia, Indonesia with the first author, Sabrianti Ekaputri, the second author, Rina Sutia Hayu, the third author, Pepsi Fiona, and the fourth author, Charles Koso. And, and this, this award, award is given, given to authors of the first best paper. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you for all participants. And, and the next agenda, agenda is closing ceremony. We will deliver by head of committee virtual the Behave International Social Innovation Conference 2020. From, from University of, of Bengkulu. Mrs. Sapriyati Ekaputi, time is yours. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. The Honorable, all faculty member, lecturer, researcher from University of Bengkulu, University Malaysia Kelantan, Prim Songkla of University, and Sambeda University. The Honorable All Participants, 
Good morning. Good day, ladies and gentlemen in college. I'm pleased to welcome you to closing ceremony, the virtual Dr. Bihit International Social Innovation Conference. So, finally, I am as head the committee of the Virtual BHIP Social Inno International Social Innovation Conference. I would like to thank all of you who have the word and putting our extraordinary conference together. Thank you so much for everything. And I am so sorry if I have any mistake in all committee. I hope that the experience in this event will be ingrained in your memory. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Thank you so much. And ladies and gentlemen, this is the end of our ceremony. Thank you so much for your attention. My name is Dinda Rahmadani Putri. I'm sorry if I have any mistakes. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good afternoon. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. See you the next yeah. conference. See you next year. See you, see you. Thank you very much for the team. We went to Mungu City, especially for Mr. Nazrullah and Henry. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Baby. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Do you remember? Pisau, putar musik aja.